Hello and welcome back to your favorite Gate Guardian player, Nistro here. Um, I woke up today and, you know, YCS London is already going on because, you know, Europe time zones and stuff, they're already, you know, it's it's already the middle of the day there. It's like eight in the morning here. And, you know, um, the second, second round, we're already seeing Gate Guardian being mentioned, which, you know what, kind of funny. Because I think I saw this guy on the Gay Guardian Facebook page saying that he was going to take it to YCS. I do remember the name Kevin here. I was watching the first duel and there was just so many points I had about what the hell's going on that I just like, you know, I, I just have to get this on video. So I only saw game one, game two, most likely not game three. It's going to be a genuine reaction because I don't know what the hell is going on with this thing. All right. I'm gonna, you know, turn the volume down. I don't want to you know, use their audio when, you know, I'm gonna be commentating over it. I'm, I'm on the live stream. I think they're gonna upload the video pretty soon. Just, just a vod of the duel. But so this guy Jake here, he's on live twin sprite, right? So he starts with one of the, um, kiss kills, and then he goes into the Leela, right? Very typical sprite start, um, or live twin sprite start, and then he has the red. He has the blue, which, you know, I, I think I think OCG was cooking by limiting this card. This card should not be a three. Um, I don't I don't care what, what Sprite players think. This Sprite blue should not be a three. Um, OK, so now he's going to overlay uh, one of the Leela's with his blue to make gigantic. And this is fifth summon. So. I mean, even if you had an Nibiru here, he has the out. I'm pretty sure red's a one-up, so the fact that he drew red and blue in the same hand is, like, insane. I mean, it's, it's Sprite, so I'm not really too, too surprised. Um, okay, so now he's going to Gigantic. He's going to summon out the red. Wait, no, that's Carrot. I keep getting Carrot and red confused. So he's going to summon out Carrot, and... Then he's going to go for the jet in his hand, I believe. Right, because why not? You you have you have two negates on board. Right, he can't imperm you. He can't um, sure as hell can't Nibiru you. So I don't I don't see there. There's like nothing to be scared of. All right, so now he's going to link away the Kisa kill and the gigantic into all right so he made the kisa kill evil twin bring back the leela i was going to make the evil twin leela and he's gonna use leela's effect target you know um kisa kill and then he's gonna get to draw a card so i you know I've played against my fair share of Live Twin Sprite. I sort of know what the deck wants to do. And the fact that he has three back row on top of what is already three interruptions, basically, because um, he gets to send Kisa Kill. I mean, he gets to send Leela to the grave um, for either Red or Carrot. And then after sending that Leela to the grave, he gets to revive it with the Kisa Kill. So that like both of them re revive each other in the same turn. It's, it's a kind of brilliant strategy. You know, because Sprite is just so, you know, I guess versatile with level two and rank two decks. Life Twin fits right in. So um, my Gate Guardian boy, he, he's starting with Wall Shadow, which I'm a little concerned because if that's his opener, there's no board breaker. I don't think he would even want to play a board breaker. I mean, he would want to use a board breaker here that isn't Dark Ruler no more because three back row and um, two negates and one pop is really intimidating now th this is just a knowledge check why would you negate this this field spell does like nothing <laughs> it does it, like it actually does nothing like everything that it does you can you can stop very easily there's no reason to negate this thing and it's once per and it's not once per turn either so this this you know sprite player like th this is how robbie cold topped top that uh regional 
in Texas. Like, people just don't know how to play against this deck. Like, what are you scared of a Labyrinth Wall Shadow for, bro? Like, that card does nothing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, it, it puts the, um... It puts the pieces in the Spell Trap Zone. It puts the little elements in the Spell Trap Zone. But, you know, it's not like those are threatening. You still need, like... The minimum you need in to, to play in Gate Guardian is two cards. Like there is no one card that does everything. You don't need to negate my, you know, single ball shadow when you can just bounce my fusion. Like it's it's really not that hard. Literally, um Okay, so he's gonna activate fusion deployment here. He can Kisa kill back for Leela, and then like after the fusion comes out, he can just pop it. Like he can just pop the fusion after it comes out, right? Unless he goes into combined, but if he goes into combined, he still has the sprite red negate. Who cares, you know? Like, the, these fusions are not doing a lot of damage against sprite, I promise you. And this is, um, this is where, you know, I think, okay, maybe, maybe he's kind of cooking. Now, me personally, um, now the, the commentators did say for a second here, right? So he placed two Kazajin, one Suijin, one song of the thunder which is my ratio right like that's that's what i think the optimal ratio of gate guardians is you don't want to play too many because you risk the chance of opening them in your hands right in your opening hands right even playing just even playing just three it's like three out of ten hands you're gonna see one right and those are bricks you have to play four because the deck needs an, another name in deck to use a lot of its cards that start its combos, right? So if you fusion deployment first turn, um, and then you go into all three, you get combined, you get like your, your little fusions, and then you need, you still have like a Prisma or another fusion deployment or something, you're gonna need another name in deck. So I understand, right? Like as much as I don't want to, if I'm gonna play two of any element, it's gonna be Kazajin over here because Kazajin the only one that is worth playing at more than one, in my opinion. Some some would say Suijin because then you can go into three wind and water, but like the grind game doesn't go out that much. And you can always add Suijin back to back to board or back to hand with tank and wall shadow and literally all the great guardian spells and traps. So it's not like, you know, once they're banished, they're like completely assed out, you know? Maybe if you're playing against Kashtira, but like Runic they could potentially banish your your names, you know. Um, so it's and the fact it's only banished face up and not banished face down is like st still not that big of a deal. So yeah. Now he has Kazajin and Suijin here, which means you know the fusion that he's going to go for is the wind and water. Now look at what happens here. So my man Jake pulls off Book of Moon on the Kazajin. Right now, I, I I need you guys to understand this. This this literally does nothing. This was a waste. This was the biggest waste of a Book of Moon in all of history because he can still fusion. He could still contact fusion, right? Because Wind and Water and all the Gate Guardian cards, they say the above cards you control. It doesn't say face up, right? So it doesn't have to be face up for you to banish it to summon out your fusion. Unfortunately, I just wish Kevin knew that. I just wish Kevin knew that. He, I wish Kevin was onto that tech. Now he normal summons Prisma, which I think this is brilliant. Prisma is the most do nothing card in the entire deck because um, there's no reason to negate Prisma because he still mills to Sangha anyway. And I was like, you know what? This might be a really smart play because this could stop. He can make he can mill Sangha and stop him from targeting his cards. Now, my boy Jake here, he tries to sprite red Prisma, and it's like Prisma still mills the name. Now, I don't know why he milled Kazajin here. That that's that's absolutely crazy. I don't know why he milled Kazajin. He should have milled um Sangha. And second off, um milling is cost, so he should have milled before he got a chance to respond. But because knowing that the the effect is negated beforehand, before choosing which card that you mill would probably alter which card that you pick, right? Because knowing that it's not going to get Songa's name, okay, is it still worth it to mill Songa of the Thunder? I don't think milling this Kazajin was worth it at all. I would have milled Songa here, definitely, so that you can make uh, 
combined, you know, really easily. Um, so he keys the kills effects for Leela here, and he doesn't even pop any of the materials. He pops field spell again, which I guess the only reason you'd want to pop field spell is that um, at the start of your opponent's battle phase, it pops a monster your opponent controls with less than 1600 attack. Okay, maybe. Maybe that might be, maybe you might be cooking. But again, that's not something you have to pop on your opponent's turn, especially after they've already placed the name down. You can you can save like materials for your turn, you know, instead of, because this dude still has, I think, two cards in hand, right? Because he only used one, two, three, four. He only used four cards. He still has two cards in hand. Like, why are you wasting your, you know, your pops on a card that doesn't even have like a follow up play? Like, 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 I don't get it. Anyway, my boy Kevin here, he's just looking at his field. He's wondering, okay, what he can do against this one negate. And he already used to pop, right? And he's attacking into the Leela again. Or not again, but he's attacking into Leela here, which is crazy to me. The fact that he did not banish these two, at least before battle phase, so that he could attempt to... Um, because he, here's the way that I would have sequenced it, uh, se sequenced it, right? Because I know going into Wind and Water is like a big Sprite Red target, right? Like Wind and Water is going to be a big Sprite Red target. So Sprite Red, if he tributes his Kisa kill, would destroy the Fusion, right? The Fusion gets to bring out one more name. And so now he's used his Monster Negate on something that is, you know... That can sort of recur itself, so you can normal summon Prisma, mill a name, and then make, um, mill a Cosigen, and then make Wind and Water again, and then you can hit over this this uh this uh, jet right here. You can go into battle phase with uh, Suijin and uh, with Prisma and Suijin on board, attack two monsters, and then main phase two banish for Wind and Water fusion. I feel like that's a, that would have been a better way to sequence this because the fact that he just did not use this for fusion, this face down for fusion, is just insane. This is why Keeper of Dragon Magic is one of the best cards or one of the best starters for the deck because it does two things in one. It unbricks your hand, it discards a name, and it searches fusion deployment, and it gets to summon out the names from graveyard face down. That doesn't mean it can't be used for material. If anything, like it's getting you two different names from one card like keeper of dragon like if there is any card that's a one card starter for gate guardian it's keeper of dragon magic and it has the same restriction as fusion deployment you just locked into fusion that turn so if you're resolving fusion deployment anyway that's why keeper of dragon magic is the best right like i don't think he he i don't think he knew that and i'm like damn how do you go to ycs without knowing that you could use your face down monsters you could book of eclipse you could you know, Book of Eclipse and still use your, you know, uh, monsters as like fusion material. So, yeah, it's it's kind of insane to me that he did not um, make his fusion this turn. Like, just crazy. Just set one pass. Oh, my God. This is terrible. You see, if he would have milled Sangha here, if he would have milled Sangha, it would have been a lot better. They're saying they're, they're looking at Jirai Gumo. I hope that set is not Jirai Gumo. I really hope it's not because that card literally does nothing. I hate this card. Like people are like, oh, it's not bad. You know, if you lock out one extra monster zone, you get to, you know, put it under your opponent's extra monster zone. I guess. But if, if that sets Jirai Gumo, he put it in the completely wrong place because, you know, it has to summon to the column that it's in and Kara is in that column already. All right, so he's going to start with starter here appropriate and it's not like we have any response because we did not go into wind and water last turn we literally could have like I, I don't i don't see what stopped him he wasted all of his negates on the most irrelevant card effects out of all the ones that you had he wasted all three interruptions on irrelevant cards you could have attacked over red and carrot and gotten some really good follow-up here but i don't know now, he didn't have enough resources in his hand to make both Wind and Water and Combined. 
Um, maybe if that first field spell resolved, he could have gotten both, but it, sadly it, it did not. So, um, he, he would have only been able to make one fusion that turn, but it's still like, would have been way, a way better situation than what he's in right now. Because if Songo was in Grave, like it wouldn't matter what he does to your board. You're still making combine next turn. If you survive. Um, I don't really know how Sprite plays over big monsters that it can't destroy. I know they go um, Mosquito a lot of the time. Where instead of trying to play over the big monsters, they play into the big monsters. They want you to play the big monsters so that they can attack into you and you take the damage instead. Right. So another gigantic sprite here for another red. Hmm. Did he already resolve blue and jet this turn? I think he did. I think he did already resolve blue and jet. So I guess red's the next best thing, but why would you? Oh my God, he's using carrot. What the fuck? Why are you using carrot here? <laughs> Okay, yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, dude has one back row. I mean, what if what if it's dead ass and bear force? Like, you just played straight into it. Oh, he's just scooping? Damn. My mans, you could have fused you could have fused last turn. I don't I don't see why you didn't. This doesn't make sense to me. Alright. Let's skip forward a little bit beauty of being on a live stream right so they're side decking maybe the you know guy oh ooh, why do they have santa claus on on the on a monitor here i mean that's not a kaiju bro that shit summons in defense and it gives your opponent a card like what the fuck i i, I wouldn't play that shit if it's summoned in attack mode santa claus would be the best um kaiju like monster the best lava golem retrain but it summons in defense so yeah all right so kevin goes first here he opens up a prep and he's definitely going to grab illusion so this can't be robbie cole build because he's not playing five of the elements so i'm wondering how different his build is i'm wondering if he's playing any cash in his build i'm wondering what tech cards he's playing um, and their exact ratios because you know taking gay guardian to a YCS of all things and the fact that he already has one win on the board like I'm, I'm not ignoring that like I don't think he doesn't know what he's doing I'm just really surprised he did not know you know what let me I'm, I'm gonna add him on Facebook let, let me see if I can add him on the Facebook group on the gay guardian Facebook group <laughs> And tell him you can fusion summon with face down monsters, with face down gay guardian monsters. Hold on. Hold on, hold, hold on. I'm about to cook. Okay, so he's going into souls here, and the good, great thing about souls is that you can mill Kazajin. And so that sets up one of your three names for Gate Guardians Combined. Now, it's a bit of a red flag if you're activating souls before you activate Field Spell. That means you probably bricked, which means if souls doesn't resolve here, I think I, I think it turns over. If souls, oh my god, he's smelling prosperity. What oh, to draw one? What? What am I watching? Okay. I mean, he he he's better than me. He 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 won around it at YCS. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, literally, I found this dude in the Gay Guardian Facebook group. I'm 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 gonna add him right now. At Kevin. Kevin P.
Oh, okay. Yeah, he said that he's staying on the basic build for YCS. So this is probably the Robbie Cole build. Okay, so it looks like he banished all three to make combined. He's going to link one into Link Karibo. Yep. And I guess you protect yourself from a single attack and targeting, which really only works if you have like a floodgate or something, which I guess your field spell counts as a floodgate, but he doesn't have Shadow Ghoul. So my guess is on the back row. So I'm guessing one is double attack, wind and thunder, and the one under the opponent's um, extra monster zone is Jirai Gumo. That's what I'm going to assume. Is he gonna, oh, he's skill draining. Wow, this early, he just straight up skill drained. Okay, he just sacked his opponent. There's no way Sprite, Sprite plays through this, unless he has a back row, back row removal. Um. Okay, so he activated this Life Twin card. I forgot what that one does. Is that Life Twin Home? It lets him search one of the Life Twin spells and traps. All right, discard Nibiru. Yep. Gate Guardian never plays into Nib because we always play under four summons. No wonder he won his first match. Now that I'm seeing Gate <laughs> Skill Drain in his build, no wonder he won his first match. Which, you know what? I don't mind Gate Guardian players playing Skill Drain. I just, um, it's funny, like, this is probably going to release before the, the video I made about floodgates. So, um, it's going to be real interesting to see what exactly happens here. Okay. He's going to book a moon as well. Interesting. It sort of feels redundant to book a moon here because you already win with skill drain. You don't have to preemptively book a moon their monster because if they have any sprite in their hand, they can still extend, right? Unless life twin home locks them into life twins. Or locks him with the fiend monsters, I think. Attack Link Karibo. Right, effect can't activate. Wait, no, he, he can't attack with Link Karibo because of the field spell. Oh my god, they didn't catch that either. No way. As a matter of fact, field spell should have popped that Leela before battle phase, at the start of battle phase. So that thing should not have been, should, shouldn't have even been able to attack. Oh my god, no way they didn't catch that. No way they didn't catch that. Oh man. I wonder how much did this guy really playtest? Like, did that not come up during his playtesting? Okay, he, he opened Shadow Ghoul here. There's no way he loses. Um, He makes Wind and Water here or something. I mean, it doesn't matter if you ask Shadow Ghoul now. It's, it's, it's like too little too late, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm still really surprised he um Book of Moon that uh that Life Twin monster because literally you could have saved that for like it in case he had the out for your skill drain, you could have saved that Book of Moon. But I mean it doesn't seem like he has. Link Karibo should still be on board. Um and combined being able to float here is probably like the best part of this board other than skill drain obviously all right so he's gonna f is he okay no I, I like he wasn't asking for public knowledge i mean for for non-public knowledge because face down monsters are non-public knowledge so I, I don't see why he flipped it up right there but he's flipped summoning his uh he's a kill frost i think that is okay so yes smashers and yeah, this is why skill drain's a little redundant in. Oh, you have to control the sprite, don't you? Yeah, or you have to be able to banish a sprite from graveyard. He had no sprites in his grave, so he Santa Clauses. It has to be in defense. Combine's going to activate, right? OK, at least he knows about combines activation. <laughs> um, I would summon water and thunder here. Or maybe wind and thunder. I wouldn't go into water and wind. Yeah, okay, so he summons water and thunder, which is the one that twice per turn you can change a monster's attack to zero. But yeah. Skill Drain really came in clutch. Wow. Skill Drain really shuts down shut down his opponent like it was nothing. Um again, like Skill Drain was so strong that his misplays didn't matter. So it was really interesting to see that Gate Guardian could actually make it to game three. Maybe we could have made it game one 
if <laughs> we didn't, you know, because it, it's very obvious that his opponent does not know what field spell does, and he just refused to read the entire effect. Um, which I don't even think Kevin knew the entire effect either. I'm a little scared of this game three because I don't think Kevin knows the full potential of all of his cards. So I don't know if he he will be able to break a board. It looks like. Wait, did Sprite brick? Did they open four set four back row and a jet? Whoa! Oh my god, no way. Okay, Gate Guardian actually has a chance here. Literally, we summoned one um one wind and water, and I think we got it. What's that spell card in his hand? Because I see Jet, I just don't know what that spell card is. Alright, so he starts with Illusion. Okay, there's no way we lose this, right? If he's starting with Illusion to get souls. How did Sprite brick of all decks? All you need is two level twos, bro. <laughs> How do you brick? As a matter of fact, all you need is one either, you know, Kisa Kill or Frost or one of the smaller ones, obviously. But like, still. Okay. So Illusion, add Souls, Souls, Dump, Kaze Jin, Summon Out Souls. Um, is Souls going to resolve here? I don't know if he has an Imperm. Is Souls going to resolve here? I know he has Book. He should book this. If he doesn't book this souls, he's... Oh, fusion deployment. Alright, reveal combined. Please tell me he... Because I know this dude has like two book of moons. So please just tell me that he actually... um. He actually banishes his face down monsters this time because like... That, that game one was ridiculous. He threw that shit so hard. Well, with the amount of negates his opponent had, I don't think it would have mattered, but because he used his opponent uses his, his negates so incorrectly, like, first off, he sees a souls on his board. He's booking this Suijin, which is just crazy to me. All right, now he has Shadow Ghoul. Like, the fact he opened Shadow Ghoul, souls, fusion deployment like this should be game maybe well we can't otk but we can set up a board where it's like okay um your monsters won't be able to attack we'll be able to negate your spells and traps at the very least meaning that if he opens up like a sprite starter wind and water could negate that shit you know all right, so he's going to place down Kazajin. Please tell me you banish for Fusion Summon this time. Please. And it's like, wait, hold on. Why are you placing down Kazajin? Unless you already have Sangha, because if you want to make combined... Wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? You tribute summoning? What the fuck? You can summon tank without... I don't get it. Why would you tribute Magician Souls to summon tank? You can normal summon it without tributing. There is no drawback to that. There is the literal first sentence. You can normal summon this card without tributing. That is insane. What? Bro, how did you make it to, to YCS? How did bro make it to YCS? All right, he, he's gonna make combined here. It still can't attack the turn as normal summon, even if it's normal summon properly. Like it doesn't, well, normal summon without tributing is still normal summon properly. Even if it's normal summon with tributing, it's, it can still, it still can't attack. So if I see this dude's life points go down below 4,000, I know that they just don't know what's going on. Why are you imperming my brother in Christ? Mm -hmm. What are you imperming right now? <laughs> Where do you book a mooning right now? Okay, so um, I always thought that combined was only once per chain because of a weird ruling that I heard someone say the other day, but it turns out, yeah, combined is not combined is not once per chain. It is multiple times per chain. So if you imperm into book, they can still negate twice. Now, this looks like game. Oh, no way. No way. Okay. No way Gate Guardian won like that. 
Like, you know, I don't mind Gate Guardian winning, but like, man, that's still just like the wrong way to win. I don't, I don't even care about what these commentators have to say. At least, you know, this Gate Guardian player beat Sprite, right? Even if, you know, the rules weren't, um, even if, you know, he didn't, um, know some of his card effects and rulings. Okay, yeah, it just says by banishing the above cards you control. I had to make sure I wasn't crazy and it didn't say face up cards you control. But, you know, good shit to this uh, Kevin guy, you know, Gate Guardian sweep. What they got going on right now? No more Gate Guardian? Blackwing? Oh my god, dear. What are you doing? Okay, that's going to be in the next video. Blackwing and Lightsorn. This has to be Edison, right? This has to be Edison. Why are they doing an Edison format duel on stream? Like a card trooper, chaos sorcerer. This is definitely Edison. That's kind of funny. Anyway, um, I mean, Gate Guardian in this in this match was still. I'm still so so perplexed as to how this played out because first off, he did not need to tribute his Suijin. He did not need to tribute his Suijin. He did not need to tribute Souls. He could have sent Field Spell after it was activated. Um, it's a really good thing that he made combined. Um, I'm not entirely sure how he got to Sangha because I wasn't paying attention here. Did he already have Sangha in hand? Right, because Kajijin and Suijin are in Grave. And he normal summons Tank. He tribute summons Tank. Okay, so he did open the Sangha. Okay. So he's going to make combined here, which again, if you wanted to negate tank, you should have done it before as soon as he was normal summoned. And second off, oh man, so many things were just wrong with this match. I just, I just can't comprehend this. Anyway, I'm going to try to upload this as soon as possible because this is, um, this seems like it's good content. So. I will see you guys in the next interesting duel of this YCS, whatever it may be, either English side or um, Europe side. Um, hope you guys enjoyed and catch you in the next one. Peace.